Hello everyone, Dolphin Oracle here again tonight, and tonight I'm going to show you the fastest way to set up a U live USB with persistence. Now I'm running off, uh, this is the boot screen for a live USB, and um, I made this stick with UNet booting, available Windows, actually I might even have been a Windows version, I'm not even sure uh, which version I used, uh, used, but anyway it's UNet booting, nothing special to it, made a stick and now I'm booting off the stick. So I'm going to come down here. All you have to do is select one of the persistence options right out of the gate. You don't have to boot. You don't even have to boot in the MX one time. You can do this right off a of live USB as long as you have room on USB stick. Uh, root persistence will load into RAM the persistence file. If you don't have a lot of RAM, use static root persistence. Static root persistence will still create the persistence file, but it will not. Uh, load that file into RAM. It'll run it right off the USB stick. So if you got a RAM conscious machine, um, you know that's the option for you. <coughs> mm, pardon me. Home persistence will create just a home persistence file for your home folder. Think of it as having your own um, home partition, but in a live USB format. Uh, both root and static root persistence. If you select those options the first time, they will make a um, home, they will offer you the option of making a home persistence file at the same time. I suggest you do it, number one, never mind the fact that it's, it's nice to have your home folder separate from everything else. It is also, uh, you're, you would also be able to run Netflix desktop off of a live USB, assuming the rest of your computer can handle Netflix desktop. Um, uh, you can't do that without a home persistence file uh, it has to do with the way the um, the file systems and attributes I don't know it talked to someone more technical than I am all I know is it doesn't work unless you have a home FS a home persistence file as well so we're gonna go ahead and start with root persistence and go from there Now you see it is now asking us, do we want to create a root FS persistence file? Yes, we do. We'll create this automatically. One word of caution, and it will make a one gig persistence file. One word of caution. Uh, unless your USB stick happens to be formatted EXT4 or one of the EXTs, Linux file systems, or, or this could take a long time. There is a progress indicator, so you'll know the thing hasn't like froze your computer. Uh, uh, if you're doing this on a FAT or a FAT formatted USB stick, which is usually the default format for USB sticks that you might buy uh, anywhere, um, it will work. It'll just take a while. It has to do with the way the, the, the persistence file is written uh, to the disk. Uh, there are some shortcuts that EXT can use that FAT can't. But it will work both ways. My stick, ha for the purposes of this video, uh, my stick happens to be formatted EXT4. Yours does not have to be, but it will make the for file for for creation much more quickly. I'm you can choose a crust up custom option to create a size whatever size you want. I'm going to leave with automatically with the uh, one gig. There's little dots. That's the progress indicator. Now, like I say, it's not going to take very long. See, EXT is not going to take very long. You might get three lines of those dots on FAT. I've usually around three minutes for a one gig file on a USB 2.0 port. Uh, okay, so now there were no errors. Yay! So we come down. Home persistence was requested, but no home FS file was found. Do you want to make one? Yes, we're going to make one automatically. Same thing. Home FS file has the same file creation scenario as the root. And here we go. We're cranking through and loading the operating system. This is all running off the live. I have not booted off this stick before. I created it right from scratch. Okay, danger, insecure password. Once you enable persistence, it gives you the option to change the root account and demo account passwords from their defaults to something personal for you. Uh, there's some, uh, mostly because now you're able to install applications, you probably want to keep people out of your stuff. So I almost have a new password. It's going to ask you twice. They will not show up on the screen. The cursor will not move. This is normal. 
And it's going to do the same thing for the demo account. This is just the use home user account. So here we go. I've created my passwords and off we go. We should boat momentarily onto the XFE desktop. So here we are, and we have our XFCE desktop. Now you're going to see the installer. You, you can ignore it. It's, it's fine. But now any app you install uh, via Synaptic or any of the other methods is going to be saved into the root persistence files. Um, so I'm going to log out, and I'm going to show you what happens. When you're running dynamic root, that's the default root persistence, the root persistence file, the contents are actually loaded into RAM. So when you make changes, they get changes get saved in RAM. So before we log out, it has to sync up on the persistence file and stick so that you it's available for your next boot. It does this whenever you go through the logout routine. Here we go. Save persistence boot. Ready to sync file system changes. It gives you some information about how big and how much space it's going to take up. <coughs> Pardon me. Uh, <coughs> excuse me. So I'm using an 8 gig stick, so you can see um, I haven't made any changes, so it's only going to take, you know, nothing. Shall we begin? Yes. It's going to do the R sync. It flashed very quickly, but it made the R sync. The persistent save succeeded. We're all good. We used up 4 megabytes of space. We still got 915 free. Click OK, and our shutdown will proceed. Folks, it doesn't get any easier than that to create a persistent uh, live USB with persistence. For tips, tricks, how-tos, head over to mxlinux.org or throw up a post at forum.mxlinux.org. This is Dolphin Oracle signing off. Have a great night.